Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of all the tones loaded into the Vox VX50 GTV digital modeling guitar amplifier. Vox have also put one of their new tubes in here, which are those little mini tubes to help warm up the sound. And I've gotta tell you, man, this is one of the loudest small amplifiers I've ever played. It's brutal, even running it at 25 watts or less, it's still really loud. So I didn't even get this up to the full 50 watts that it's rated at. It's insane. So it has a really efficient four ohm speaker and it's probably class D power amplification because it's super lightweight as well and just throws a whole lot of wind. This is crazy loud. I've never seen anything quite like it. Just to give you a quick rundown of the Vox VX50 GTV amplifier, we get 10 different presets built in, 10 different amp models plus a line input. So if you wanna play acoustic guitar, whatever into it, there's that option as well. Another benefit to this amplifier is you can store your two favorite presets just by holding a button down the amplifier. So you can save your favorite clean tone and your favorite drive tone and recall them at the touch of a button. As I mentioned, this amp is extremely light. It comes in at 4.1 kilograms, which is only 9.04 pounds. A massive thanks to Sky Music for the loan of this. If you want to check it out, I'll leave some links to everywhere down in the description below so you can see how much it is in your part of the world. This is a really loud amplifier. I hope you like it. Let's get into it. All right, let's kick it off. In today's video, I've got the amp mic'd up with a short SM57 and a Sennheiser E906. We're gonna start off on the deluxe clean. I've also dialed in a little bit of spring reverb. The power level output is at about half, so probably 20 watts or so. Here we go. Such a beautiful clean tone. To me, that's one of the best settings on the amp. Over to Boutique Clean and I've just adjusted the treble and the bass controls. I'm also over to the hall reverb instead of the spring reverb. Neck pick up. A very different sound of the last preset, but still very usable. Over to Boutique Overdrive, I've just turned up the gain a little bit and everything else is just as it was. This is Bridge Pickup, let's give this a go. Great bluesy tone, I dig it. Let's try the Vox AC30 preset now. This is bridge pickup. That sounds cool in the room. Over to the box, AC30 top boost. I've got the gain at 12 o'clock. Treble's all the way off. This is so bright, this preset. And bass is at about one o'clock. Little bit of spring reverb, neck pickup, humbucker time on this Tokai Love Rock. Here we go. I'm not sure how that's coming up on the recording, but it is very, very bright in the room. Over to bridge. Yeah. 
So that's extremely bright, but it kind of works on the bridge pickup, but just know you can't turn the treble down any further than where I've got it. So if you want less treble, you're gonna to have to start to use your tone control and your guitar. Over to the Brit 1959 with the gain at 12 o'clock. I've also got just a little bit of tape echo on this particular one, so you can hear how that sounds. This is neck pickup. <laughs> Another one that's on the overly bright side, so just be cautious of this. I think you really have to start using your tone control. Let's give that a go. Put the tone control on on the guitar. You know, that didn't really respond as well as I would have liked. Still usable, but just very bright. Over to the Brit 800 preset, I've got the gain cranked to about 3 o'clock almost, the treble down but not all the way down, the bass up at about 1, this one's extremely usable and sounds great with just a little bit of analogue delay, here we go. <laughs> Is so loud that is unbelievably loud over to brit vm which is a high gain channel i've just added back a little bit of spring reverb take a listen to this i'll start on bridge and then we'll go over to neck pickup for some lead stuff <laughs> for sure that was going to take off it almost felt like it i probably shouldn't have turned anyway it sounds pretty wild hopefully it sounds just as good on the recording over to slod this is a great sounding high gain drive channel i've got the gain crank the treble and bass in pretty much the same spot as before except i've added a little bit of analog delay here we go this is bridge <laughs> Over to the double rectifier, this one completely rocks and it really shines on bridge pickup but I'll show you some neck pickup tones as well, here we go.
loud, man. This thing is a beast. <laughs> Let's try the modulations on the amplifier now. And I've just switched it up to my PRS SE Custom 24. We're going to do this on the clean channel, the deluxe clean. So the first one, this is the chorus preset. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds great. You can tap tempo this as well by using this control. You can add more just by notching it up slightly. Nice. Over to flanger, we're going to slow this one down by using the tap tempo button over here. Let's take a listen to this. that to go faster get that nice and easy nice over to the face preset now we're going to speed this one up a little bit here we go <laughs> Yeah, all right. Over to the twin tremolo on the amplifier. Let's try this. Beautiful. Now, if you're wondering how the tuner works, it's nice and simple. All you have to do is hold down this button here and the tuner lights up. Now we only get one light either side of true pitch. So if the light is red, you're either flat or sharp. When it goes green in the middle, you're good to go. This amplifier allows us to save user presets and that you can recall up to two of them nice and easily with just using the panel on the front. We can save a clean tone to this preset A here. The light is green. We can then customize this clean sound however we like on any of the channels that are clean. And then we can hold it down. It'll start blinking. Hold it down again, and it saves that to preset A. Now, if I turn the amp off and on, I go back to preset A, it's gonna sound exactly like it does now with the chorus and the analog delay and all that kind of stuff. Same goes for B, we can just push B. We can save a high gain preset or whatever we want. Hold it down, let it blink, hold it down, and then it will save, so pretty simple. Thanks for watching, folks. My name's Shane. I'm gonna give you my thoughts about this Vox amplifier. So. It's loud, it is so loud, it shocks me. This is 50 watts in an amplifier you can basically pick up with your little finger. It's crazy loud. I can't believe how much volume they've got crammed into this. This will be loud enough to jam with friends with actual acoustic drums. Now I'm not saying this will fill a room, but you'll still be able to hear it. It is brutally loud. Even at one o'clock on the power level, it throws a lot of wind. So just get ready for that. It's quite shocking how they've made this acoustically respond. It's just like, boom, lots and lots of volume. So a really efficient speaker, it runs at four ohms and it's loud. So it's, it's shockingly loud. Let's talk about the overall tone. So the modulations, delays and reverbs all sound really good. You can kind of customize them. I really wish these amplifiers, all of them, uh, there's very few that have delay and reverb at the same time. That's a really great and classic combination. I would have loved to have seen that on here, but it is what it is. With that aside, I think it's very functional. The clean tones on this amp sound great. They're very, very nice in the room, especially the deluxe one. It's just, a, it's a beautiful sound. Now, when it came to the drive tones, some of them are just far too bright. I found some of the Vox tones a little bit on the overly ice picky side. There's just no way of sort of dialing that out any further. Even with the treble control all the way down, it's just a little bit too much. But once you get past the Vox settings, you get into the British settings, that's where the amp really comes alive. And that Soldano one, man, that's so much fun. And it sounds massive in the room as well, which again is crazy for a small amplifier like this. One of the interesting things about miking up amplifiers, I've been doing it for about 20 years, even before I was doing YouTube. This just doesn't record as good as it sounds in the room or as well as it sounds in the room, whichever way you wanna say that. It just sounds better when you're sitting here as opposed to what I'm hearing back on the recording, but some of the presets still sound really good. 
it's a hard thing to convey oomph <laughs> from a recording. You can probably get a sense of it because it is extremely loud, but yeah, it's, very, it's just a hard amp to really mic up and to do it justice. But there's a few settings in here that I really think this amplifier could have you know, benefited from having a mids control. I think that's another thing that Vox amps just never have, and that's their thing, right? But it would have been great to have a, a mids control on here as well, just to sort of scoop and sort of change that mid frequency response. I would have loved that. There's just some that are a little bit on the honky sounding side. But man, I gotta tell you, this thing's fun. If you're looking for a small amplifier that's blisteringly loud for its size, lightweight, and just a whole lot of fun, this would definitely be a really great choice. When it comes to the new tube that they've got in here, I'm not exactly sure what that's doing in the whole signal chain. It probably warms up some of the tones to some extent because this is a digital modeling amp, but either way, it still sounds good and you can probably find at least two settings you want to store on here for your own practice at home or if you want to jam with a friend. I reckon this would be loud enough to do some jamming with. The next keys to the guitar shop, I'm going to try this out in the context of a band mix because I've never seen an amp amplifier this small that's so loud. It is, it's full on. You've just got to try to believe it. I haven't tried the headphone jack or the auxiliary in. I don't play with headphones, but that's on there as well if you want to check it out. But great amplifier. I've had a lot of fun with it. Not all of the sounds are good, but what can I tell you? Not every amplifier has great tones anyway. So I think they've done a good job with this and considering the size and price, it's pretty cool. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down below so you can check it out in your part of the world. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.